So we're going to look at uh, adding texture to objects. We can give objects a color very easily. We simply give it what's called a material. So with the object selected, we go over here on the right hand side to this uh, sphere, black and white checkered sphere. And when we uh, click that, it brings up this window. Um, let's click on this cube. Oh, that's what I thought I clicked on. Um, without me doing anything, it's uh, it's added this material, but it may look like this. In which case, you can click New. Give the material a name. It's probably a good idea. So in this case, I'm going to call it Wood. And um, down here, I'm going to give it a color. This diffuse color is its basic color. So if I want it to be brown, I can go like that. And over here on the right of this little palette, I can uh, make that a lot darker or lighter. There's an intensity of color as well, and we can change that value. So if it's not intense at all, it's very dark, uh, going to a sort of very, very light version of it. We've got how shiny it is, this specular value, or you can say uh, the specular intensity, and we can see the preview here, it's starting to look a bit like a, a new Malteser, whereas if we lower the intensity it's more like a about to melt Malteser. You can, ch you can add your own numbers to this, you can press uh, 0.5, I'll take it back to where I was, and a few other options which you can explore. Things like transparency, whether the object is see-through, in which case you can tick this and reduce its alpha value. You might not see the result in this window unless you change to a different mode material there. So you can see now that it's uh, it's added the material to this uh, plane as well, I think because it's the only material in the scene so far. Um, I think I've just got it attached to both of them, which wasn't something I intended to do, but there you go. Uh, I'll turn that back up. There you are, so we can see now that the box is opaque again. I'm just going to change it back to solid mode. Uh, you've got mirror here, so whether it's a reflective surface, uh, you can turn that on if you if you want to. So you could simply colour your objects like that, uh, but most people want to add textures to it textures to give it the look of a real material like wood or stone or or whatever it is uh, and to do that once we've created a material just like we have just done here uh, we can go to this red and white checkerboard button and here we can add so if we go to new we can add images to our texture you'll see that here we can choose the type uh, there's quite a few types, but the one we're after is image or movie. And then we open an image uh, from the computer. Uh, so I'll choose this wood texture here because that's what I named my material. You can see I've got a brick texture in there as well. So I'm trying to keep all my textures in one folder called textures. So textures are just photographs that you can take yourself or edit in Photoshop or have a look on the internet perhaps. Um, and so now, although it doesn't seem to have changed here, we might be able to see if I go to texture. Now the problem is here is the light is not uh, being very helpful to us. I'm just going to check the settings for the light to make sure That it's uh, going to show things up. Change that back up to 30. There we are. <clears throat> so this is a red light at the moment, uh, which is a bit of a hangover from a different video. There we are. So it's not really showing us that wooden texture there. We can have a look how it looks in the rendered view. There you go. So we can see that it's got our photo on it, but it doesn't look quite right it looks all a bit skew-whiff and that's because 
uh, the object doesn't necessarily know where to put the image. It might not, you know, it doesn't know whether this is a cross or, or that's a cross or, or, or where a particular bit is supposed to go. So it's us, up to us to map our image to the object. And an easy way to do that, come out into solid mode, for many objects we can use what's called UV mapping. Right click on the object, or uh, if it's not already selected, and go into edit mode. With all the faces selected, so the whole object basically, uh, if it's not all in orange like this, you can press A, um, so it might be like this, you can press A and that will select all of the faces. Over here on the left hand side you can go to shading and UVs. Using unwrap you can simply go ooh, unwrap or you could use smart UV project or you could use basically any of these. Uh, so we could go like this, smart UV project, press OK and then over here back to our red and white checkered box. We can scroll down. The one we want is called mapping and it's just down here. We've got coordinates, UV, uh, which is what we want. And so hopefully now if I go into just go back up to object mode um, for no reason. Uh, go into that rendered view again and hopefully this time there we are, it's updated and it looks like word is going in the right direction well it's going in all in the same direction at least and if we have a little look at our box we can see that it's sort of mapped it around there a bit okay um, you can use different types of mapping if I go into edit mode again uh, you should be able to do this while it's in rendered view uh, and choose different wrapping modes. So if I click unwrap again and click, let's just try unwrap, let's see if it changes it at all. Because whatever we do here, it's it's going to use those coordinates here. There you go. So we've got a different sort of look to it now. So you could stick with this depending on what you want. Or alternatively, come over to where we make the materials, this black and white sphere, and I'm going to add a material to this, make a new material, I'm going to call this brick because that's what it will end up being, and when you click assign you will see that that will change, change colour, so it's only assigning this texture to this face. You can pick multiple faces or whatever if you want to colour the whole thing in using a couple of different materials. Uh, then we can go to our checkerboard, red and white checkerboard. Sometimes this happens, uh, you have to just scroll up. We can make a new image, I'm going to call this one brick image. <coughs> And down here we're going to press open. Look for our textures. Well, and you can see already that that has uh, changed it on there. If I go into the render view, you can see that updated there. And in addition to changing its UVs with any map here, we can alter. Some of its different settings so we've got uh, particularly here we've got the size so if you want it to be uh, larger bricks for example we might put in something smaller than one so it stretches the image out or for smaller bricks we put a, a higher value so it squashes the bricks in so there we go have a go adding some textures to your objects.